Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. I'm Professor Muhammad Moin. I'm working as head of the Department of Ophthalmology and Director of Medical Education at Postgraduate Medical Institute, Amiruddin Medical College, Lahore General Hospital. We're going to have a session on career counseling, and our main focus is on training in USA by clearing the USMLE examination. We all know making this decision to train outside of your own country is usually a quite a tough decision. During my training, I was lucky enough to be trained in the UK. I did my FRCS from Edinburgh and FRC Opt from the UK in London. And then I also had a training masters in medical education by the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan. I also did fellowship in Vitrio Retina from the University of Arizona and University of Cincinnati. I did fellowship in ocular plastics. I entered my training abroad by registering for the Irish Medical Council. At, at that time, there was no PLAB or Irish clearance exam to be given for going into the Ireland. After training or completing my training in Ireland, I moved on to the UK after passing my FRCS examination and on the basis of that I got GMC registration. During my preparation for the FRCS, the part one, I was able to clear my USMLE examinations I always wanted to go to the United States, but because my ophthalm, but I chose ophthalmology as a career, so it was difficult to get a job over there. So I had to take a route to the UK because that was the easily accessible route for ophthalmology at that time. So after passing my FRCS, I did specialist training in Glasgow and from there I was lucky enough to get a call for subspecialty training in ocular plastic from the University of Cincinnati and then I did one and a half years training over there then I came back and after serving five or six years I had the opportunity to go back again and do a second fellowship in Vitrio Retina in the University of Arizona and then I later on had an opportunity to do masters in medical education. So I've been through the different routes and seen different countries, but I found that coming back to your own country and serving your own nation was the best choice. But getting the right training is an essential part of your life and that is an asset you must work on hard and today we're going to discuss with you how to make that tough decision. So there are different routes to go, either you can go to Australia, you can go stay here in Pakistan, you can go to USA or UK. It all depends on what your family background is, what your parents support is, what your financial status is. So after you make that decision, considering those points, you can make a decision of all these places. I think if you want to train in general medicine or its specialities, America is one of the best training opportunities available with a comprehensive end to training because once you enter training, you are going to exit. UK used to be different but now it has also become similar that you enter a foundation course and you end up after your specialist training. So the next question we are going to ask uh, Dr. Ali Noman and we talk to him in the detail and he is our first pioneer batch student to get selected in residency program in the United States and he's working in Detroit and he says that start preparing for USMLE in your fourth year and what I will say is 
even if you don't want to go to the USA, if you have funding available, that is a good opportunity to work on because you never know which direction you will have to go in your future. Give your exam in the final year summer vacations. Doing an elective in USA or UK in the fourth year is a good alternative, but you have to apply there in a year's advance. Then if you want to go to USA, what are the different types of visas which are available? Usually, if you have only given you step one and two, you will have to go through J1. The important part is that it is after you finish your training, you have to come back for two years because they stamp a two-year home country rule on your visa. If you want to take an H1 visa, which is a work visa, you will have to do step three. That is a license exam, but slightly difficult. But if you are able to do that, you will get an H1 visa. And by getting an H1 visa, you will be eligible for a green card later on. While if you go on a J-1 visa, you either come back to your country or you can serve in America in some uh, remote areas where you get a waiver to J-1 home country rule. For the new changes in USMLE from 2021, the scores of USMLE Step 1 will only be pass or fail, while Step 2 CS is suspended due to COVID. Being the Director of Medical Education, I'm involved in processing and approval of USMLE application for students. So I want to highlight three important things which happen when you apply for USMLE. The first is status verification. The second step is credential verification. And the st third step is getting an ERAS token. Status verification is you can only take USMLE if you have completed basic sciences. So if you want to apply, uh, can apply on the USM, uh, ECFMG portal and they will send a request to the Dean of the Medical College to verify that this student is enrolled in studies in a medical college. Or if you've completed your studies, you will be asked to give your diploma to the dean and he can verify that you've passed and completed all requirements of the medical college. Once you've done that and you can take your USMLE exam, but the next step will be verification of your credentials. The credential verification will include verification of your degree and medical transcript. In our times, it was used to be quite difficult that we used to send the letter to ECFMG and the ECFMGs would send the letters back to the medical college by mail and sometime you had that lost in the mail. But now it's very simple and it goes through electronic route. So there's a web portal for ECFMG where the dean goes in and signs in and uh, he can verify the degree and the transcript. The most important part the students forget is that the verification does not happen the same day as you submit your application ECFMG. The ECFMG takes three, four weeks to verify or your process your application and then it uploads on the Dean's portal and then it's verified by the Dean. Then at the end when you finish your training and you're ready to You've passed your exam and you're ready to apply for residency matching, you need to go and get an ERAS token from the ECFMG. For that, you will need a medical school performance evaluation form or an application which is processed by the medical school. So, an um, MSPE will show your attendance in different specialities during your training and it will actually also give your grades during each rotation and your relative position with the other students during your grading or examination in the wards on the ward test and the other thing it also gives an overall evaluation of what you performed during the whole uh, 
five years and what is, was your position relative to your class. And the other thing which they want is that you will need some letters of references or comments from your teachers in that MSP document as well. And the other thing is that you need to have evaluation of your other skills apart from your knowledge that will include your professional skills of professionalism, your communication skills and uh, your system based approach. So that is also mentioned in MSPE. So it's important that you get that document filled in properly and probably the best way is to fill your ward card in our medical college we have devised the ward card in such a way that it automatically fulfills all the requirements of MSPE and you can take the data from that and get an uh, application made. So today I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Ali Numan Khan. He is the PGY2 in internal medicine at Detroit Medical Center, Wayne State University, Sinai Grace Hospital. He did his MBBS from Amiruddin Medical College in 2012-2018 and he was the first graduate who got matched in the U.S. residency program. Welcome Ali Numan and uh, I'll hand over the session to him and I hope you have a good time listening to his valuable comments and you start preparing for the exam and get ready for your future. Best of luck. I hope you all are doing well. I am Ali Noman Khan, currently a PGY2 internal medicine at the DMC Sinai Grace Hospital. I graduated from Amiruddin Medical College, Lahore in 2018 and I'll be going over the topic of USMLE and residency training in the US with you guys today. So let's get started. Here we have the list of specialties that uh, has been chosen by uh, US IMGs and the non-US IMGs in the past. So you can see internal medicine, family medicine, pediatrics, psychiatry, emergency medicine, and neurology and pathology are the top specialties that uh, were opted by the U.S. and non-U.S. IMGs. And here we have the list of the ACGME residencies. Uh, ACGME stands for American College of Graduate Medical Education. And uh, you can see the list of residencies offered by ACGME. And uh, you can see anesthesiology, general surgery, orthopedic surgery, uh, all of those uh, that uh, have been offered in, the, in Pakistan as well that are available in the U.S. So, so prior to uh, prior to start your you know uh, your training in the U.S., you need to get certified uh, by ECFMG, and the ECFMG certification uh, requires uh, you have to clear step one, step two, and the step two CS in the past, uh, but step two CS is now being suspended by ECFMG due to COVID. So you need to clear your step one, step two, step step two CK. And then uh, ECFMG has offered uh, six pathways instead of CS uh, to get certified. So here we, uh, here we have six pathways uh, that are offered by ECFMG. So the pathways that are offered by ECFMG, uh, you can see the step one, step two CK and OVT exams are must before any pathway. Uh, pathway one is like uh, already licensed to practice medicine in your home country. That means you have done your house job and you have a permanent PMC license and you just need step one, step two and OET exam to get certified. And then pathway two states that uh, uh, you have already passed a standardized OSCE exam in your final year. That consists of like VIVA and practical. Uh, that is verified by your medical school and Amiruddin Medical College uh, can verify the OSCE exams for the students. And then pathway three pathway 4, pathway 5 are for the U.S. grads and the pathway 6 is the new pathway that is offered by ECFMG <coughs> by licensed physician, you know, evaluation of clinical patient encounters by a licensed physician that usually consists of a licensed physician uh, will score your clinical performance in 4 or 5 patient 
uh, patient scenarios and uh, that will be submitted to the ICFMG and if you pass it, uh, you will be given ICFMG certificate. That will be starting in August, uh, that is called the mini CEX exam. So let's talk about the general approach and the step one, step two CK, visa issues, step two CS and United States clinical experience, research and other factors uh, that are important to uh, for US medical training. So first of all, uh, why do you wanna do USMLE? A lot of people uh, have questions like, uh, why do you wanna do USMLE? Some, some uh, want to make a difference in their lives and uh, some are, you know, some some just uh, uh, want to go away from the current system that they have, and uh, some do for the peer pressure. Uh, most of your class fellows are taking step one, and uh, you feel an urge to do as well. So these are the most common reasons behind USMLE. You can see it's natural to uh, to buckle under peer pressure. Uh, but the thing is, you need to you, you need to tell yourself like, why do you want to move to US? Why do you want to leave your family? And uh, you know, uh, why you want to get trained in US? Uh, if someone else is going to USA, uh, uh, you you shouldn't be going to the USA based on that. You should have your own thought process for that. You know, why do you want to move to USA? So the big questions regarding USMLE. Here we have the big questions that everyone. Uh, everyone has in their mind. So what is the best time to start preparation? Uh, now, uh, I mean, uh, whenever whenever you decide that you want to take your assembly, just start the preparation. It's never too late. And then step one or step two CK first. It depends. Uh, like some uh, some people have a have a good clinical skills. Uh, some uh, some uh, some are strong in basic sciences, uh, so you want to decide uh, by yourself like uh, which step you want to take first. But most of the people take step one first because uh, most of the questions uh, or the scenarios in CK are uh, dependent on step one knowledge. So you should take your step one first, then CK. But if you are really good in your final year subjects, then you should take step two CK first. Then how much time uh, should you use for your preparation and how, how, how many reads you should give? It also depends on, on you. Uh, some people are comfortable with just two or three reads and some require 10 to 12 reads. So it's all uh, depends on you. And then uh, we'll talk about the study materials for step one. So the book for step one is uh, First Aid, USMLE, yeah, you all know very well. Uh, you use in your other exams as well, like uh, uh, PLAB or FCPS exam. So first aid is the main book for the USMLE step one. Then we have a UWorld QBank, and then assessment tools like NBME and UWorld self-assessment. And uh, most importantly, yeah, you should uh, you should take Kaplan lectures before starting your first aid. Uh, the thing is, you the first aid you need to understand word by word instead of just uh, you know memorizing it. So Kaplan uh, serves as a tool uh, to learn the first aid instead of just memorizing it. So the subject wise breakdown for step one, uh, we have pathology. Uh, you, yeah, you you all aware of pathoma. So you should read Pathoma for Pathology, Pharmacology, Kaplan Lectures, Microbiology, just first aid uh, would be sufficient. And then Immunology, Kaplan Lectures are a must. And then Physiology, BRS for Kaplan is up to you. And then Biochemistry, Kaplan Lectures, and then you have uh, Behavior Sciences, Psychiatry and Ethics. Uh, 100 Cases by Conrad Fisher is a really good book. And then for anatomy, just, uh, just, uh, just listen to Kaplan Lectures for Neuroanatomy, and that would be sufficient. So, accessory resources. Uh, if you are, if you have done uh, UWorld, you have done first aid, you have done Pathoma, then you can do USMLE, RxQ Bank, and MBOSS. Uh, again, uh, these are not the requirement, but uh, you can add that uh, to UWorld and first aid. And then lecture series as doctors in training, uh, in addition to Kaplan. So, uh, approach towards Kaplan is very important. You should uh, learn Kaplan instead of memorizing it and trust your NBME scores. Uh, it's mostly like NBME is the predictive exams that you take before your step one. Uh, you score like plus minus 10 in your, in your real exam. Uh, if you take NBME and you score like 250 on NBME, 
and then the oral exam should be like 240 to 260. So trust your NBMEs, do not over or underestimate it. So let's talk about uh, USMLE Step 2 CK exam. So book for the USMLE Step 2 CK, there's no book for the USMLE Step 2 CK. If you have taken Step 1, then you should start with the U world for the USMLE Step 2 CK. And the assessment tools are the same like U world self-assessment. The books that you can use for USMLE Step 2 CK are MTB uh, for medicine, MTB Master Supports 3 for surgery, uh, Step 3 U world, CMS and NBME. These are all additions to uh, you know U world and uh, U world and and uh, uh, U world Q Bank for the Step 2 CK. So visa issues. This is the most important factor in your uh, USMLE journey. Uh, some people get denied, some got, some get accepted. So, most common reasons for rejection. First of all, 90% is bad luck. Uh, it depends on your luck for your visa. And then uh, the common factors that you all know, inability to communicate, mentioning an unreasonable stay, uh, writing address of relative in US. So you can see, uh, you know, before and after graduation, the common reasons for rejection. USMLE Step 2 CS is being suspended by the USMLE program. We can go over this later when they will resume this. Uh, so we need to skip that right now. So additional factors to improve your CV. You can do Step 3. Step 3 is not required to start medical training in the US, but uh, you should take your step step three during your medical residency and then you have uh, USCE that we call United States clinical experience and then uh, that consists of observerships electives research elective research fellowship and then year of graduation is the most important factor uh, you know if you are if you if you just graduated and then you apply for a residency there's a higher chance that you can get accepted and then medical school performance uh, how, how do you perform in medical school, your distinctions, your gold medals and everything. And then achievement in extracurricular activities uh, that shows how dynamic you are as a person. So at the end, it is pertinent to mention that uh, United States clinical experience and research should not compromise your scores in any way. They can be a cherry on the top if you have good scores, uh, but uh, they, they shouldn't be the top priority. You should uh, score high in step one and step two. Uh, then you can try for electives and research that can, that can be an extra addition to your CV. So I would like to thank you and uh, for inviting me over uh, to have a talk on this topic. And uh, if you have guys have any questions, you can email me or you can contact me uh, regarding that. Thank you.